In a world with entirely too many shows about cars, this is another pointless automotive podcast. What's happening, What's ladies up? and gentlemen? People. Hi. Can you believe? <laughs> oh no. Can you believe, good sir? Can you believe it's been one full mother effing year? One year to the day. Yeah, episode 50 deuce in a very on a very special episode. Um <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna Is it? Is oh it's it? well it's gonna be special in a non-traditional sort of sense because we to celebrate one year, we 52 weeks, 52 episodes, um, yes. we've managed to not skip a week somehow. Correct. Which I feel like is a little bit of an accomplishment. We've yeah. had some close calls. Sure. With various sicknesses, whether you got pink eye from working on a rat infested E30, <laughs> or I that. got COVID for I don't remember who because children. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's uh it's kind of I guess a bit of a milestone. And if you and, and and if you've listened to oh, first right. off, I'm sorry if you're out there and you've listened to 52 of these. Tremendous. I apologize. Sorry. Yeah. Um but I would say we are indebted to you if you're one of our dozen or so listeners yeah. who seems to be coming back for more. Thank you. I'm not wearing a hat. If I was, I would tip it. Um, but uh, that tip. That's thank you for that. And yeah, I think what we're going to do today is, uh, Chadwick, would you like to look at my, my, my topic notes here, my show notes? It's about it's, usual for you, man. It is. It is. It's not that different, but it's Frank, genuinely... Frank shows up with a blank uh, post-it note. He's like, I got my notes, man. It's completely blank. Um... But I think what we're going to do is we're going to not talk about cars for this one. We're going to talk about all the other this is stuff. Challenging. This it is, is very challenging. It's going to be difficult. Like if, if I didn't have anywhere to be uh, and, and, ha- and sh- t- right after this and I have to actually show up as a functioning human being, I would say we should probably take a shot for every time we accidentally talk about cars. Oh, boy. But I think what we should do is for an, uh, once a year, we will have a, a completely non-sequitur, off-topic um, in the world of automobiles episode. Yes. And we're going to talk about, because if you've been listening, like, you, you, there's been hints here and there about like maybe what we do or don't do or like outside of the world of talking about cars. Frank's a friggin' enigma. I hate it. <laughs> wrapped in a little. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to talk about, just random non-car stuff, stuff that we like not yeah. in the car world. We're going to go full off topic today. Um, if that means you're going to skip this episode, then so be it. But I see you next week. <laughs> Bye. Um, so this is like an AMA, but ask yourself. I know. Talk very, about yourself. Yeah, I, when, <laughs> we need to get on. I need to like lay on a couch and just have you uh, drill. Drill me sounds not appropriate, but on a couch. On a couch. Sure, it's not a casting couch. It's not wrapped in plastic. <laughs> it's um, so it's still a thing. I don't know. I don't know. That might. Have, Isn't might have... everybody stuck under something nowadays? Is the theme. <laughs> Well, if you're Sorry. stuck on the casting couch and somebody's not cleaning it nearly enough. Yeah, that vinyl. Boy. Um, so let's not talk about <laughs> automobiles today. We'll still do maybe a quiz at the end, and maybe we'll, we'll probably just do some quick 38 PCP. seconds of PCP. Sure. Um, Why don't you drugs? Bring us up Are you into drugs? Yo, yeah. Hardcore drugs? Is that, is that how we're going to lead us is off? That how, that's how we started before we I started know. taping. Exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, we started. Um, why don't you bring us give us? Why don't you give me the I don't know one minute elevator pitch on what the who the hell is Frank the Enigma? Oh boy. Okay, if someone uh, I guess that's the thing. If you were like bumping to somebody like they're holding a drink and you're holding a drink at a party. Oh and no, not a casting. <laughs> no. Bumping into someone. <laughs> yeah, casting. bumping into someone. <laughs> <with the> casting. <laughs> um, I would say, I, it, it, boy. Um, you only have one so minute. You have to time me, Frank. No. So, <laughs> um, what do I do in my day to day outside of this? So, I am. Uh, I'm a photographer. Um, that's what I do professionally. Um, but what's the history that led Frank to become a photographer today? Oh boy. I want to know. Let's do that. So, yeah, let's do that. So, I um, I've been a, effectively a Bay Area native my entire life. Quick stint in Gillette, New Jersey, between the ages of like two and six. Formative years. Um, exactly. So otherwise, I've been here in the East Bay, uh, Contra Costa County, mm-hmm. here uh, in, in sunny Northern California. Um, and yeah, I, I, I graduated high school. I went to Congrats. junior college. I know it was a struggle. Um, went to junior college. This whole time, I always, you know, quote unquote, a car guy. But I also I had very other. That would have been a shot, by the way. Exactly. Turns out, yeah, just a car guy. Um, so I went to Sonoma State um, after uh, three years at 
at the JC because why do two? Yeah. Um, you know, why get that third get that third year in there? You know, you're better than that. Um, and so, but it worked out because I, I met my wife in that third year, so it, it all it all worked out. Um, the went to Sonoma State, graduated with a psychology degree uh -huh. from Sonoma State, and then I I had to go get a job. So I was like, well, what can I do? And so I, I became an insurance adjuster, which we discussed previously. We did yep. on the podcast, um, but all the while on the side, I was doing um, photography casting. stuff. Just no, just we're not going back to the casting. <laughs> I was taking pictures of people on the casting couch. Yeah. Um, but no, so I've always fascinated with with photography. So when I was in like middle school and high school, I had a hand me down old Minolta SRT one hundred and two film camera, mm -hmm. full manual everything, um, which I used. You know, I had a friends to BMX stuff and inline skate so, stuff, you know. Um, and so I would, I would take pictures of them. And so, and then um, I eventually graduated to early digital SLR stuff. Nice. So I bought a then brand new, this would have been like 2002. Okay. I bought a Canon 10D, which was like hot shit, like 6.3 megapixel. So legit. We were cooking with yeah. gas. Yeah. It was like, it was like the one step before professional level gear, the prosumer body. Um, and I shot on that a long time and, and ended up doing um, some sports stuff, motorsport stuff. I had a buddy who um, would get passes to hot import nights back when that was a thing. Oh, yes. Um, and, I, and, and he was able to get me a press pass to shoot at, at Sears Point. I guess that was maybe even still Sears Point. Um, or it might have been Infineon. Might have been Infinity. I think it was Infinity. This would have been 2003 or 2004. That's Infinity, I believe. Um, the very first season of Formula D. Oh, nice. So I got this, you know, it was like San Hubinet and that crazy Viper yeah. and all this stuff. And not to, to try not to talk about cars. Um, and so, photography. <laughs> but I've always been interested in photography. And then I got into doing, I had a friend who was a wedding photographer. And she was like, hey, you know, I've got to do some wedding photography stuff. And will you help me out? So I did. It worked out. So I've been doing, taking pictures of people. And then I quit the J job at the very last day of 2019 to get into events and stuff. I have a photo booth business as well. And so um, doing events with the photo booth business and doing events as a photographer. And then okay. 90 days later, there were no more events because of COVID. So I pivoted to taking pictures of cars because that's kind of what I'd rather be doing anyways. Um, and unlike most, there's a lot of photographers that will take pictures of cars but don't know a damn thing about cars. 100%. Uh, and there's a lot of car people that don't know a damn thing about taking pictures. And so I, I kind of, in, in a little, not unique, because it certainly are, um, you know, the, um, the Larry Chen's of the world and yeah. all these people that. You're the connecting them. rod of the I business. I am. Exactly. I'm not the crank, I'm not the piston. No, um, but yeah, so that's kind of what I do in my day to day. I have a photo booth business. Very cool. One's built into a, a, a K car. Subaru Sandbar, once built into a, a vintage camping trailer, a mm -hmm. 61 aristocrat little over. Mm -hmm. So I'm building those businesses back in, in the ashes of COVID. Um, and then, yeah, like otherwise, like, a good background. I guess other stuff that I do outside of this is, oh, yeah, segue and into the modern, all right. Well, I'll, I'll jump over to you in a second. Um, but just call us on there, like, yeah, so, you know, film camera stuff, old, old camera stuff. I've got nice. a massive old film camera collection. I like to shoot a lot of old film uh, stuff. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, in the day to day, that's kind of it. Dude. We'll get into some other, other deep dive stuff. Like what's your favorite movie? Yeah. <laughs> oh, but what, what do you do in your day to day other than slumming around here or, or even in your, in your recent, recent past, I guess. Oh uh, yeah. Depending on how you want to go. How, yeah. Let's how would you, if someone came up to you at a, and they opened a beer like that right in front of your ear <laughs> and they said, ah, hello, sir, I'm drinking this beer. Let's talk over a beer. What do you do? Who is Chadwick? Yeah, no, that's a good one. Like a little one-minute pitch. I mean, I grew up. I grew up in rural Maine, and that's, that was like seven minutes. But that's that was my good. Fault. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, I grew up in rural Maine, which is saying something, since all of Maine is pretty much rural. Uh, right. I grew yep. up really in the boonies, uh, far from where I currently live in California. Uh, let's see. Graduated. Hence the, hence the shirt today. Yeah. Well, look at that. Says home has the state of Maine on there for you uh, non-geography people. It's the uh, has more coastline than California. Fun fact for you to keep. Really. That's, I, that's yours, Keith Frank. I will fight you on that, but no, carry it's, on. It's 100% true. I don't think it is. Oh, I don't know. 
Who, who knows the answer to that? The Fine. geography. So my bachelor's, we'll talk about education. My bachelor's degree is geography, GIS. Oh, man. Okay. Um, and I went to George Mason out there in uh, Fairfax, Virginia. But before that, I was an army veteran, uh, tours in Kosovo and Afghanistan. Fine. Uh, like a whole other life. I uh, got out, worked. Um, I worked in the defense sector for a long time, got my degree, uh, and then I got my MBA. Wait, the, you, you, you mean you didn't immediately, once you signed up, go out and buy like a new Ford Mustang? And uh, I had a so I had a my Corsica still. I did eventually get a V6 powered Grand Am, which was. But no, you're supposed to take like an 18.9 percent APR loan. Well, that's today. This is the old military guys, <laughs> where we were still eating ramen and like mm, scratching and by. So yeah, it was a different animal back then. Uh, but yeah, we were below the poverty line by like 20 fold. Mm -hmm. uh, so then I eventually got my MBA uh, focused on leading innovative organizations. Cool. Uh, so basically for my professional career, I worked in operations. I like to fix, I always fix stuff, right? I've always been tinkering You're the cars. Fixer. I am the fixer. I'm like the uh, Mr. Wolf from Pulp Fiction. Yes, exactly. Pulling with an NSX and get my, <laughs> get my sweet and creamy coffee. Um, some brain in your backseat. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, I'll clean this up. So yeah, I just uh, mostly worked in big uh, organizations, uh, defense sector, tech companies, that kind of stuff. Cool. Uh, I've lived in Maine, uh, DC, New York, and now California. Uh, and now I work on sub $2,000 turd boxes in my yeah. shop. <laughs> so full circle, baby. Uh, don't forget where you came from. The fixer. Uh, but that's pretty much it, man. Um, I, I know we're not supposed to talk about cars, but yeah, always always had an interest in cars. Always yeah. used to drive a lot more, used to get a lot more track time and race, but now it's mostly just turning wrenches and talking about shitty cars on a weekly basis, 52 of them. So exact. when you're when you're not turning wrenches on piles of garbage, um, mm -hmm. or, or or let's just say let's just say unpolished diamonds. Aww. Um, diamantes. Um, <laughs> God, I want an early diamante so who doesn't? Bad. We're talking about cars. We're, exactly. We'd be so <laughs> drunk already. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, when you're when you're not working on cars, what <laughs> you know. what other thing like do you have any other hobbies or other stuff that interests you or other other things like what draws your time <laughs> other than other than like I, i'm not going to get into it but what, what no nope no, no, just cars next question uh, <laughs> uh, no uh no he does not have a meth lab yeah that's all what i'm alluding to we're working on it um okay. so, i don't know man i'm super outdoorsy okay. i still love okay. hiking fishing uh i've got cars, but I've got an off-road rig that I'm trying to get sure. more adventures in with. Cool. But yeah, I do a lot of fishing. I have a, a soon-to-be six-year-old son. Uh, I know Frank's same. in the same camp. Same. Uh, <laughs> so we, that takes up a lot of our time, I'm sure, collectively. Yeah. Uh, and it's a lot. And he likes outdoorsy stuff. We go fishing so much. Cool. Uh, and I grew up hunting and fishing, obviously being from rural. What kind of fishing? Just straight up? Straight up like any fresh water. Yeah, we, we do like, there's some local rivers around here in the delta oh. of the okay. bay. Uh, so really good fishing. Uh, yeah, banjo strumming on the <laughs> yes, uh, but yeah, no, that's that's me. Uh, I'm into that. Um, how so about camping, you? like, are there good camping spots? Like, where's your go-to camping spot here? Like, do you to, have one yet? I like to go around. There's a ton of different. I love like these. Um, there's really good parks in California. California's yeah. park system is fantastic. Whether it be uh, beaches, we just spent some time in Mendocino, which is absolutely Dude, Mendocino gorgeous. Mendocino is so sick. Have you, have you done um, like uh, God, what there, like Salt Point? So we went, um, we went to like six different beaches and we did Glass Beach, which is like yeah. So that's really that's really like right up in uh, is that Fort Bragg? Fort Bragg, yeah. yeah. So a little a little bit up there. It's gorgeous country up there. If you guys know California at all, it's good drive. It's on the northern ish coastline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, gorgeous drive up there. Yeah. Uh, fantastic. But yeah, that kind of stuff. I like Big Basin. Uh, on, okay. In the Santa Cruz Mountains. Yeah. Great Falls in the Santa Cruz Mountains. I've uh, never camped there. Oh, it's beautiful. Tons yeah. of trails. Uh, Huge redwood trees everywhere. It's just if you like to get outdoors, California's got you covered. Like honestly, we gotta, be... we gotta do the camping thing because my, my my son who is also about to turn six, um, November, November birthday gang rise up. Nice. Um, he's I, like he's all about camping, and I just it's hard for me to find time to do it. But anytime we do it, it's just like epic. And and I'll, we'll do it just like just him and me and maybe a couple of other friends um, and we'll just go and he'll, he eats it up. Like he's, nice. Yeah. He's way into it. Um, we'll get it in the books. I got to get the Land Cruiser back fully operational. We can pile in there, put a tent the, over it. Again, not talking about cars, but the Sienna Sorry. was like killer for that. Cause exactly. it's just like, you sleep in it. You just sleep in it. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a tent on wheels, especially for just two. Right behind us. Killster XT would be a fantastic oh, yeah. little off-road excursion Absolutely. vehicle. Absolutely. But, um, so yeah, um, How about camping, you, outdoor, camping outdoors thing is one of those ones where like, I enjoy it, but I don't do it nearly enough. Yeah. Um, like I'd love to get way into more like 
just like day pack hiking and stuff like that and, and going on going on trips and like well car camp and it's easy to do with the kid but um there is so much unbelievable like camping and adventure stuff that you could do here in northern california you can go in a single day you can go from like beach to snow to desert um damn near in the same day and right you can, you can touch it all and so yep. it, it's it's underutilized for me personally i mean there's people that here that absolutely live for it yeah. um but i don't do it enough and so um i'm trying to think of some other stuff past current current view so here's something that's kind of it, well, let's go off the rails here Ooh. which is what we're doing today um i used to be way into it not hardly at all now but i still have some of my old gear floating around oh. i used to be deep into the woods on uh paintball Okay. Way into it. So okay. starting from middle school up until probably, shoot, probably about 10-ish years ago. Okay. Maybe less, maybe more than that. Maybe more like 14-ish years ago, 13, somewhere in there. Um, I used to go, not like every weekend, but like probably two dozen times a year. Damn. Um, I was on a, me and my younger brother, we were on a, uh, like a small potatoes tournament team. We got, we got, we got, it's funny, like, we played all these, like, small time, like, local tournaments, uh, and we'd win, we were very competitive, and, and so we would do really well, we got sponsored, we got sponsored by, um, 808 Paintball Hawaii, of all, <laughs> oh, of all man. places, um, they don't exist anymore, and they sponsored us, they sent us a bunch of, like, paint and some gear and some, like, Ooh. stickers and stuff, and then we, we never played again, like, they sent us all this stuff, and we like, yeah, we're tired, <laughs> and then we'd be like, hmm, hmm, and we walked away. <laughs> never even too played. close to the sun. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but I still have, like, I was, like, way into, um, kind of like I am with, uh, very similar to my hobbies with, with car stuff, which is, like, obscure, forgotten about, older stuff. Like, I have all these, and I got rid of most of them, but I still have, like, a probably, like, three foot by two foot by three foot cardboard box full of old gear. Toxic paintballs. Yeah, super, yeah, exactly. They like, yeah, paint. Paint. Exactly. Um, but no, I still have a bunch of old, like old school, like early 90s. Dude, that's like, awesome. Semi auto paintball stuff. I have got some pump stuff. I've got, got, I've got an old um, single pump arm Phantom. I've got some early auto mags and auto cockers. I have my old Spider Special Edition. That was my, this particular Damn. one wasn't, but it's the same as my old one that I got when I was in seventh grade. Man, um, which would I, have been like 1997, 98. I think I would really like, I paintball like Dude, twice so in my whole life. I would probably hurt myself now. I'd probably like True. compound dislocate my femur or something. Right. Um, but like, um, I'm more familiar with the deadlier munitions. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm still sure. a gun guy. Like I have a gun collection, love to get sure. to the range. Um, that's one of maybe those we things. could swap things. Maybe we, we should. Could, we could experience well, each other's. We should. Like, and I, we don't I, shoot each I've other. I've done skeet shooting, and I, this is that's not even a shout out to the casting couch. Like I just I've yeah. actually <laughs> shot clays before, and firearms really intrigue me. Like I would love to have like an old like M1 carbine or something, something with like some historical gravitas. Sure. Some really interesting, but like I just don't have it in me to just like. I know statistically, if I have that shit floating around my house, like the likelihood of something bad to go sideways. Is, well, the is rule is it fun. doesn't. It doesn't float around the house. It gets well, sure, true. Safe. Fact. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's very beyond true. Um, but yeah, like it's what something that's always inter it's you know what it is. It's like motorcycles. It's, for me, it's like motorcycles are super intriguing, and I would like love to like ride a motorcycle around town and be sensible about it. But like, there's always a little bit of like a latent fear in the back of my head that like. Some clown is gonna like sneeze and like rear end me, and it's gonna be like now I'm a vegetable. And True. so, kind of similar similar deal, like super fascinating. There's some just I'm in the mechanic me mechanized stuff. Sure. The old school paintball stuff. The old school stuff is funny because it's just like there were all these different people, like different companies, trying to like how do we make a paintball gun semi automatic? And so they all had these weird different approaches. And mm -hmm. I used to have this collection of all these weird different ways to like different Rube Goldberg machines that we use to fire a paintball. Frankenstein's monster for sure. Yeah. And same with like, you know, like early weird, like fuel injected stuff or early era turbocharged stuff. Like that's what really intrigues me. Sure. On the car side. And that's, that's another shot. That's over. so many shots, dude. I know. It bleeds <laughs> over into like the stuff I'm interested 
otherwise, like okay, so you you have uh, you were just talking about, so you have you have some you have firearms, you own you own. Yeah. Some, some I mean, I grew up I grew up hunting at a very young sure. age, so very yeah. comfortable in the military. I, I kinda yeah, super familiar with firearms. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and it's it's like a passion of mine. I, I really like it. Um, everything from maintaining them to going yeah. to the range and just. You know, stockpiling ammunition for when the zombies inevitably come. That's true. That's I mean, true. Let's think when, about it. Um, yeah, when when yeah. When, uh, when, when George Soros himself <laughs> comes down from the sky and the globalists or whatever. But like, do you have um, like, what do you have? Do you have anything like super interesting as yeah, far as I, firearm stuff? Not that like you need to sit here and like. Yeah, in case the uh, exactly the DOJ is listening right now or, or whatever. Like, you know, not to say like I've got a you know. A, I've got an MG42 from World War II. <laughs> um, just say like, in Minecraft after is what me and my buddy. <laughs> so every time we like if we're talking on like a video game or something, we'll just yeah, say, yeah. hey, yeah, I got some new rounds for my oh in, in Minecraft. Yeah. yeah. Do you have anything that's like not incriminating but like kind of interesting that's like like was like your your crowning achievement? Like I'm not watch guy, but like if I was, I'd be like, oh, I've got this, you know, whatever. Just sure. GMT Submariner. I don't know. I don't know watches, but like I've got some favorites. I inherited a lot of my father's firearms that I was See, that's when cool. I was a kid. Yeah, that's so what he had like a he had a model stuff. had a model eighty, which is similar, like exactly what uh, the FBI used to kill Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, so it's like very okay. old uh, firearm, very cool. But is that all? It's all like a long gun. What is that? Yeah, it's a, it's a rifle. It shoots like a thirty five, which is a really hmm. weird Winchester round. Uh, okay. Those rounds are like two dollars a piece if you can even find them. So is it lever action? No, it's semi auto. Uh, that's oh, what the okay. FBI was issued. And the cool thing is, an internal barrel. It doesn't have like a bolt that necessarily moves. It has a barrel that moves inside the big barrel. Oh, so it's sick. like super cool. It's that's a very um, cool firearm. It's funny that you say that because there's a, there's like this super like obscure paintball gun that was that's similar the same function, thing, right? Yeah, the whole the whole barrel would reciprocate like it's thematically. Like, like it's like the big forward. naval guns, you know. You ever see the big naval yeah. ship guns? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's like that. I've got a, I've got an AR kind of like kitted out the way okay. what I used to carry as an sure. four sure. uh, in the military. So I'm very familiar with that. Right. Uh, and then I have like an 870 like tactical pump that I really like. Just so you so one would say you keep the pistol grip pump in your lap at all times. Yeah, oh, Zach okay. Delarocco would agree. With yeah. <laughs> 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 little Rage Against Machine reference. Exactly. Which, and that's a cover, by the way. True. Yeah. yeah. Who, who did the original? It wasn't Ghetto Boys. Uh, it wasn't Scarface, was it? I don't remember. I can't remember the original. I know it was a cover. Yeah, that, that information lost yeah. me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, I play, I play with guns. Uh, what else do you play with? Do you do... I, I feel like you've, you've mentioned video game stuff before. Do you, do yeah, you, dude. Do, so, I mean, video games... Like, I grew up outdoors a lot, but I also had video games. So sure. I kind of grew up like, racing balance. video games. You know, I had an Atari 2600. Ooh, uh, I have dating, dating I still, I still, I still Oh, you have one? Yes. Oh, with Missile Command, Pac-Man. Um, <sighs> Combat was one of my favorites. I don't favorites. remember which ones I have. I have two copies of E.T. I think we talked about that on the podcast. Oh, the <laughs> yeah. unplayable. I've beaten it. I've beaten it. Is it possible to beat yes. it? I thought it was glitched. Yeah, no, you get to the end. It's The game is glitchy. Like, you randomly fall in holes for no reason and, like, get thrown into prison. But you can get to the end. Once you assemble all the parts, you actually call home. Remember, you oh, get the phone, yeah. and then you go away on the UFO. It's horrible. <laughs> Do you, um, uh, are, you, are, you, are you up on your, like, glitch game lore? Uh, I know a like, little uh, bit. Do you know, uh, uh, what's it called, Big Rigs Over the Road Racer? That's the one where there's no physics, right? Like you The physics are completely jacked. Like if, you hit a, if you hit, like, a brick wall, you just go, like... like we also like, talked about this, and I brought, up, it up, and over I brought it. up the Lot Lizards minigame, and you were like, no way! <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, big or, so true. or Pyongyang Racer. Like, Dil yeah, those are just crap. There was like a motorcycle one that was like just absolutely horrible. <sighs> I'm trying to remember. I had a. It was like a. It was like a cup truck, and like um, oh, game. God. That's like a five dollar Walmart game. It sounds. Well, like. no, it was. It was, well. They came with like a compilation. <laughs> I think it came with like a like a, the original Need for Speed. Oh. And it was this. I don't remember, but it, I just remember that the game CD, I don't know how we discovered this, but if you put it into a regular CD player, it would just play the soundtrack. Yeah, some were like that. Some yeah. of the PS1 games were like that too. I, I don't remember. It was like one band did the whole soundtrack, so basically you got the band's out, like second album or whatever it was. <laughs> For it was like that minimal price. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, like what I, I, I used to play, a, not a lot of video games, but like I used to definitely play as a child and as like a misguided 20 something I used to play a lot more than I do now I almost never play now which is a shame I I played Counter-Strike with my brother for the first time god that like, game's good um, I played it with him this is the first time in probably a calendar year sat down and played with him and some of his buddies because they kept calling me and texting me he was like he lives in Philly so like he's three hours ahead of me and so it was like eight o'clock I was putting the kid to bed he's just like 
He's like drunk dialing me, be like, bro, we need, oh, a, we need a fifth. Squad get up. In. Exactly. Get in. a fifth. Get in. And I'm like, ah. Oh, well, bro, you need to get I'm, a well, system. I had like me download Steam oh, you're and playing, like all this up. You're yeah, I'm on PC. PC. Okay. I, I was, the last real system, so my wife just bought a Switch. Yes. Um, for, mostly for her and, and, and the kid to play. And, but I haven't, and then before that, I hadn't had anything besides a Wii. And I didn't have That's anything but before that. Was a PS2 like I I, I did the console Such a stuff. Good system though. PS2 was probably one of my top systems of all time. I think my favorite of all time is N64. Really? Yeah. Super Nintendo over N64 every oh, day. I have Final Final Trigger, Legend of Zelda. Oh, dude, Link Ocarina of Time. Link to the past. Ocarina, Ocarina, Ocarina of Time. Link to the past. <sighs> Screw Mask all the Majora. <laughs> um, or Majora's <laughs> Mask. Get out um, of here. You had uh, Mario Kart. Super Mario Gold. World is the best Mario Golden game. Golden Eye. Golden Eye was good. Gold up. Dude, Pilot Wings on 64, underrated. <laughs> underrated! Yeah, maybe. That was a good game. Maybe. Um, maybe. Wave Racer was overrated. Uh, yeah. It was on like Game Mario, too. Mario on 64, though, was so good, though. It was fine. Super Mario World was better. Then you always feel bad when you like pick up the whole the little uh, penguin guy and like throw him off a cliff. You did that, didn't you? Uh, you have to How at least once, and then you immediately just like become sullen. Dude, just <laughs> like your Counter Strike, me and my friends have gotten into PUBG. Like dude, recently, okay, I did. That was like the last so, time, dude. So when when my son was like a newborn, and was like the up and down every couple of hours thing. Like yep. I got into playing that game, and that was like almost beta release. That would have been twenty six, late twenty sixteen, early twenty seventeen. Yeah, I think that's. That was fairly really early in that game's history. It was like it was super buggy and shitty at times. Still is. Oh, good. But it's amazing. Like so, they have cross platform now. So I play with like. Oh, my when I played it, was there was only the one map. Oh no, we like, got just the one map. And right when I stopped it, they just introduced that like westerny map. Oh dude, there's tons of maps it. now. Uh, cross platform is supported, so if Good you have an Xbox though. or PlayStation, yeah, I play with my friends on the East Coast all the time. It's it won't cross it won't cross platform with uh, PC though, will it? No, that would be unfair. No, because those guys are just mouse clicking chippos. Yeah. Yeah. You got to move that analog stick, you know, and try to try to get target. But we play we anytime we have like a half hour to kill in the evening, yeah. we just do let's hop on. Yeah, and it's it's a freaking riot, dude. It is fun. It's fun like it's playing it, like game. by yourself and you're just like like headphones on so you can hear it, and you're like listening for like gunfire and like. <laughs> hearing, getting like frying pan in the back of the dome. Right, and that's yeah. why I told my buddy I want to set that as like my alarm to wake up in the morning and sound of the footsteps because it would just fucking wake Dude, I feel like after two months you would just become this like neurotic paranoia. mess of like <laughs> paranoia and like pain. It's just you be where there's like an accessible hidden gun somewhere. Exactly, yeah, yeah. back to the floating around. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so um, mm. yeah, that's one thing. I don't want to say like I wish I was like into gaming more than I am. Just that we don't have time. It's yeah, time. I, it's, it's time. Time is the enemy. Um, but yeah, like there's a lot of stuff I feel like I, I kind of wish I would get into. <clears throat> food. Yeah. I'm a food guy. Like, I, I'm kind of food. I love eating. I love eating. Well, <laughs> I love eating. Back to the casting couch. Um, <laughs> I hate it. But like with... You are what you eat. Exactly. The... <laughs> I guess it's a dick. So... Like, yes. I, I wish I had like more time to like get into like cooking. Is that it? That's your, uh, your secret. Well, I like eating. Your secret design. And I have a bunch of, like, I feel like I have, like, a bit it's of a creative mind. Oh, if I did this and this. Well, I know. It's not like it's an un un unconquerable thing. But, yeah. like, you can make my wife is very good at cooking, and she really enjoys doing it. She does the lion's share of it. She has been forever. Like, her her brother, my brother-in-law, is, like, a Michelin star oh, yeah? chef. Um, and so he's, he's like, that family, like, is, is like, Done lots of really good food. They've got a genetic uh, edge over you, my friend. They just do. trying to enter that. Uh, they do. My parents are my business. Growing up, my dad did all the, like the, the lion's share of cooking and stuff. And he's 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 good at it, and, and same with my mom. But like, nice. I didn't. I can like, if I had to make a meal, I could do it. Like, it's not like a problem. But like, good, <laughs> good. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. Good on you. Um, <laughs> but like, if I had, I don't know. Like, I I know like people that are like way into just like being like. Like a straight up ninja in, in, in yeah, it in comes Spanish. natural. It comes natural. What's your what's this? What's your go to? It's hard because now I'm thinking about foods. I'm like I couldn't live without that or that or that or that. But like if you had to pick like a like a Ooh. genre, this is easy. Of food. What are you going? Seafood, dude. The seafood. Yeah. Oh man, from New England. I yeah. I, that's I, here's the thing. I didn't eat almost any seafood. Period. Until I was like probably. 25 and then I was like look this stuff's gonna be good I just need to get like 
I made a conscious decision. There was a bunch of stuff I like didn't eat. Like I didn't like tomatoes. I'm like, no, this is dumb. Like I just like, I need to just suck it up, Buttercup, and just eat stuff and be more open minded. And I did, and now I kind of am omnivoric. Like I'll eat anything. Yeah. Um, almost anything. But the so seafood. I'm kind of a late into the game as far as seafood is okay. Concerned. But I'm pretty into it. Like me and the kid, we'll go around, and that's our thing. It's like we go to different places and we try and find the best fish and chips. When's the last time you cracked open a fresh Maine lobster with a um, nice old glass of Sam Adams? Ooh. You know what? I did what I, I did have myself a nice in in, um, in in North End. Is it North End? Is that what it is if you're in Boston? Yeah. North End? North End? North Side? Could be. Usually South End? South End? That's the edgy side. Well, sure, but like if you're going to go and like go get yourself a lobster roll. You go to Maine, first off. Well, sure. But in Boston. I, I did I mean, in Boston. I did it in It was fine. It was, but it's fine. Like, it's I feel like I'm. <laughs> I'd like much rather have, like, some really legit crab cakes or just, like, a really nice, a, a really nice, like, cut of fish. Like, a, like a really, like, legit cut I'm of fish. I'm sorry about that, Frank. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, dude, but my, my, my son, like, my five year old, he will smash raw oysters. He will That's wreck weird. shop on them. You know what's funny is like I, I don't. Know. I'm not a fan of it. I'll eat just about anything. He, he prefers barbecue ones. But yeah, raw oysters not my thing. Man. You know what's on point? Scallops. You know, speaking of casting couch, raw oysters. True. That's true. <laughs> That's how you. <laughs> you can belly up with a bar. Um, oh boy. Okay, so your seafood game. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about this? Um, so okay, we're, we're you know what's funny is I feel like you grew like you growing up on the east coast and me growing up on the west coast. We've got a very different like. Um, compass when it comes to, to what's good and what's not on food. Yes, you're probably way more well versed in Mexican food and you have oh, no Mexican idea what food might be. You, you have no idea what pizza is, but yeah, go on. Um, nope. I don't. You did already know. start off the last episode with a pineapple pizza conversation, so. Well, sure, but here's the thing like, I'm not. Uh huh. Here it comes. What's your go to pizza though? Like, what's, what's your typical pie I can't. out here? Oh, you but mean if you go back home? home. I if love back home. Yes. So I love garlic and ham. Garlic and pizza. Ham. Like actually chunks of garlic on there. And I can do the garlic. Ham. Wait, ham or spam? Ham. Oh, ham. Good um, lord. <laughs> well, I, 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 I heard ham at first. I think you just ended the pizza thought, conversation. <laughs> um, I've never had spam on pizza. Good. Um, ham. Okay, I think ham is a little. I would rather do pepperoni. I think just straight garlic and pepperoni. pepperoni. That, works, that works too. Works as well. well. I want the little, the little kick. I want the little spice. Well, ham's good. Olive. Though. You don't, you don't do olives? You can on like a veggie pizza, sure. You wouldn't do meat and olives? No. Oh, Maybe mushrooms if you're going to put something kind of that's not Mushrooms meat. might be my least favorite pizza topping. I love mushrooms on pizza. Uh, they're okay. I'll, if they're there, I'm eating them. <sighs> okay. um, I do, th I will say this. There's people that do like the whole like Chicago versus New York thing. Yeah, it's fine. I've had, I've had real Chicago. In Chicago, I've had real good And it's very good, but I, don't, I, I would entertain the argument that it's not technically a pizza. How so? It's almost more like a like a pizza influenced quiche, or quiche isn't the right word because there's not eggs in it, but like a like a um, what's the what's the word I'm thinking of? You're right. You're right. I know what you're talking it's about. Like quiche, a, yeah. But not quiche. Quiche is like egg based. Totally eggs. Um, yeah. It's like literally all eggs. <laughs> literally. Eggs. But like a um, yeah, just like a I don't know. I can I can entertain the argument that it's not a pizza. Just like you can say calzone's a pizza, but it's a calzone. It's its own deal. Yeah, because it's enclosed. There's some science behind like a calzone not being. But if you just got like a like a full out of the oven pizza and just folded it over itself, it's calzone. Does it become a calzone? Yes, sir. As long as you can seal it somehow, <laughs> right? It's like, it, How does it go full? Like, is a hot dog a sandwich? Well, a calzone's like, a, a giant hot pocket, right? <laughs> it's behind. Back to the casting couch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the I don't know. So pizza. Mm -hmm. So where are you on Mexican food? Like Mexican food's fine. Do you generally enjoy it, or is it pretty it's far a, down? Is it pretty far down on the totem pole? It's pretty. I think it might. It might be my favorite. It's pretty far down. Line. If it came down to seafood, Mexican food, yeah. But the, also, there's like bad Mexican food, and then there's good Mexican food. So when I so there was a period of time where for like a year my brother lived in the UK. Okay. And so I flew out there in like the middle of December to go out and visit him. And all we did was we rented a, I think it was like a Toyota Igo. It was a little three-cylinder city car. Nice. And we, we rented it in London. And for 10 days, we just drove around the entire fucking island. Okay. All of Great Britain. Um, and so I had a rule. I, right when we landed, I said, if we find a Mexican food place Boy. in Great Britain, we have to stop there and eat. We just have to. Sure. Like, it's, just, it's going to be terrible. And we just have to accept it. I bet it was damn good. 
We did. We found a place. It was damn good, wasn't it? In Glasgow, Scotland. Okay. Um, it was good. It was not Mexican food. Wow. It was. So first off, we walked into the place, and it was called like Joey Jose's or something like mildly. Was and there a picture of a soccer ball on the on the sign? Worse, <laughs> my friend. The sign was fine, but you walk in, and the left on the left side, on the right side, there was a bar with a couple of tables, and on the left side, there was like booth seating. Okay. And the whole wall was like decoupaged with um, like clips out of uh, like 1950s spaghetti westerns of like black and white clip, like just still imagery of like all these like incredibly insensitive, Boy. stereotypical like Mexican like bandoleros. Giant sombrer- sombreros. Yeah, with like, the, with like the like the strap like over the mouth and like then like slack jawed and like very unflattering and it was just like boy this would not this would not fly in california like it was mm, probably not but so we got there and our it's funny so we sit down and then like the, the guy comes to our table the, the waiter and he's like hey uh yeah how, how are you guys doing how can I help you in like a totally american accent we're like what the fuck um weird and it was it was super bizarre but yeah we got um he was there for school i guess there's a big art school in glasgow and so he gives us our food and i ordered i don't know what i ordered like a burrito or something and it was like super skinny, and it was just meat, and it was like oh, I it was almost like a chimichanga. And then that. it was, but it was like cut on the bias, and it was dressed up all like interesting. And it was like cool. there was like carrots on the side, and peas. It was like super weird, um, but it was really good. But it was absolutely not Mexican food. Okay. Um, so I, I, that's what I imagine. If you've got Mexican food in Maine, that's what I that's what I imagine. No, I think there's some legit. There's some some of the best Chinese food I've ever had is in Maine. Which is a weird, a weird. I can thing. imagine that. Like, I feel like there's like different spots of like, you go to any. Well, not that Maine has. Yeah, Maine is like the city. least diverse uh, state. <laughs> <that's got laughs> it's true, fact. Um, um, but yeah, that's that. Yeah, um, just the fact is that coastline nonsense you were spitting out. Yeah, you know it's true. When you look it up, you're gonna be like, God damn it. Girl, you know like, it's true. Yeah, challenging the geography guy. I like that. Um, and more islands too. A lot of islands. I could, but, uh, I could buy the island. But you'll see the coastline thing too. Uh-huh. Um, so another thing we talked about food and you want to cook. I, I have a green thumb, Frank. I love Dude. growing. I have a greenhouse oh, in the back of my place, and I. Coca leaves or what are you? What are you, uh, you, you uh, seeing back there? Opium we're, we're gonna keep it PG thirteen for the cast. Um, um, no, just um, crops. We're growing right now. We have crops. watermelons. <laughs> we have watermelons. Oh, we have loss. carrots, tomatoes. You have like a greenhouse, or yes, just like greenhouse. Mm. Yeah. So okay, that's uh, cool. I inherited that. My dad was really good at that shit. My dad, that's what my dad does every yeah. year. He's grown, always growing up as a kid, tomatoes, corn. Dude, homegrown corn, when it comes out right, I feel like anything orders of the time, it's anything terrible. Anything homegrown is better than what you get at Dude, the peppers. supermarket. Peppers, peppers are good. I love the tomatoes. The tomatoes I make are so fresh. The carrots yeah. are insane. Yeah. Uh, it's super fun. It's always been a hobby of mine, like fuck around with plants. I've always been good at it. Some mm-hmm. people kill house plants just by looking at them. Uh, right. I kind of have a green thumb, so that's a, that's a little fun fact. Dr. Green Thumb, wasn't that a, uh, 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 not Cottonmouth Kings, uh, Cypress Hill. Wasn't that a Cypress Hill fight? Yes. Dr. Green right. Thumb. Yeah. That's right, that's right. So that's you. That's what you, that yeah, is, um, I, that was actually I me. don't have that. Like, I, I definitely, <laughs> once every other year, I'll get like a, a bug up my ass and be like, oh, I'm going to grow, we're going to do all these, we'll grow tomatoes, we'll plant some peppers, do all these things, and then like, I get like, Four like blossom end rotted like tomatoes. And, yeah, like, I forgot to water them for Yeah, because I like, forget <laughs> they exist. I'm like, oh no. Um, well, shit. And it just doesn't, yeah, I, I, I don't, I, yeah, I just don't, I, it just never works out. Huh. What about animals? You got pets? I, I don't, don't just, just myself. That's true. An animal. And a nearly six year old. Heavy so. petting? Yeah. <laughs> um, the, yeah, no, I don't, I, I don't really either. We used to have chickens. Um, and then like something, I've gone through several editions <laughs> of the, 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 the chicken. They won't sell your chickens any longer. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not. You're, it's, on the, you're on the wall of the chicken store. Exactly. Wanted. Don't sell them. Do not sell. No, just, there's, uh, let's just say um, owning prey animals is yes. um, there's extra responsibility. <laughs> and even when you meet those responsibilities, you can be met with heartbreak. Correct. Um, and it is quite stressful. Yeah. Um, especially when you then couple that with like having a young child. Yeah. Like, you and don't want to explain the circle of life. Real Ex- quick. Well, no, it's not explaining the circle of life is totally okay. And be like, hey, this happened. But like screaming and like actual murder and be like, oh, this this chicken no longer has a face and I have to break its neck and like 
just not okay situations. You know what makes um, it easier? I, I, we, I know as of like a couple of months ago, I no longer have chickens because of predatory situations. And I'm no rush to replace said chicken. But you totally didn't need to like snap the chicken's neck and then whisk, do the shh thing in its ear afterwards like you were Steven. I don't even snap. I don't even snap its neck. I slowly like choke it out. And then you're just shh the whole time. You're, you're, you're at peace now. On that dark note, would you like to ask me a quiz? Oh, you know what? I think I should. Let's um, break the movie. I'm going to queue it up. Will yeah. you explain to the, uh, the people? By the way, thank you uh, everyone for one year. Yeah, uh, we'll probably touch on this again. Yeah, we'll definitely right close out. With um, but uh, and putting up with that nonsense that was not car based. Um, yeah, that I mean, was somehow fun. we did talk about cars. That was fun. Yeah, it was super fun. Um, so what we're gonna do now is our little car based quizzing show uh, where we talk about an automotive print ad from the eighties, nineties, early two thousands, and I have three guesses to kind of arrive what Frank is trying to read to me. He's going to omit anything in the print ad that gives it away. That's right. But we're going to get into it real quick here. I'm going to put 10 minutes on the clock as soon as he finishes the ad. Frank, what are we doing today? Oh, what boy. Do you got? Um, this is, so normally where the, the traditional image mm -hmm. is the, the front three-quarter shot. Money this shot. is going to be the rear oh. three-quarter shot on this. The vehicle is clad in a, in a bright medium red. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Um, at the, it takes up the bottom half. This is a two pager, my friend. This is a, a, Ooh. a, a not a fold out. It's not a center fold, but it's a it's a it's a two pager, and it says <laughs> it's designed to rev your engine before you turn the key. Okay. It began. It's got auto start. <laughs> exactly. Key remote start. It began with the swift wedge shape of the blank. Then we souped it up, introducing the blank. It has a new front air dam, period. A rear spoiler, period. Period. Dual exhausts, mm. period. A bold taillight strip, period. Alloy wheels, period. <laughs> Michelin steel belted radials. But head turning looks are, the on are only the start. Under the hood of the blank is a new 12 valve, 2 liter engine. It has 110 horsepower and timed sequential multi port programmed fuel injection. Translation it has more kick. The blank also has more in the way of comfort. Settle in the contoured driver's seat. It adjusts every way but loose. <laughs> Back to the casting couch. And wait till you wrap your hands around the leather-wrapped okay. steering wheel. So much comes standard, too. Power moonroof, power windows, power mirrors, cruise control, air conditioning, and AM FM stereo sound system that includes four speakers, four speakers, mm -hmm. and a graphic equalizer. Oh, graphic. Simply put, Back the, the blank has a lot to get revved up about. Sir. All right. Let's start it. 2 liter, 110 horsepower? 110, 12 valve, okay. uh, multi, uh, time sequential multi-port programmed fuel injection. Single overhead cam. Single overhead cam, uh, comes with dual exhausts. Dual exhausts. A, a bold taillight strip, mm. alloy wheels, steel belted radials, uh, cus uh, very contoured seat that will adjust in any way but loose. Leather wrapped steering wheel, Here's moon, roof, seven, moon roof, power windows, power locks, power mirrors, air conditioning, four whole speakers. You know what I wanted to go with is MR2. Uh, okay. But you said moon roof, and I don't think those had power moon roofs at the beginning, right? I know the second gen came with uh, removable sure. moon roofs. Or T tops. Yeah. Then they became T tops in the later ones. Mm -hmm. But I don't think the first gen had power moon roofs. So I think I, that rules that one out. And, I know I had a two liter, but 110 seems kind of low for the 3S GTE, right? So, maybe. No, no, that's not Toyota. MPFI sounds kind of Toyota or something. Um, light strip, and then I thought Pontiac Fiero, my friend. I thought Pontiac Fiero for this. Okay. Uh, but I don't think the engine is, well, they did have a four cylinder. Size, I forget the displacement. All I know is the 2.8. Oh, Iron Duke. Yeah, all I know is the 2.8 V6. Um, could it be? There's no way. 12 valve. Yeah, that's interesting. That's what you should, 
or could lean on, I suppose. You think so? 12 valve. I don't know. You, I feel like knowing 12 valve engines is pretty MPFI, 2 liter, pretty deep into the woods. It's pretty deep. Um, yeah, I don't want to say Fiero for because they would have mentioned mid engine for sure. Um, there's those giveaways. MPFI. God, I want to say Toyota was MPFI, but this thing reads like a domestic ad. 2 liter, 110 horsepower. There's a lot of periods. Uh, I stopped saying period, but every time it got to the standard options, after every option, punctuation period. Heavy. Yeah. Power mirror, period. Power windows, period. Power mirrors, period. Cruise control, period. Air conditioning, period. This is tough. Two liter with 110 horsepower? Two liter, 110. 12 valve, MPFI. I will say this. So it's a three valve per cylinder. I'm not, this is not a hint, but it's just a clarification. Mm -hmm. So it says, it began with a swift wedge shape of the blank. Then we souped it up, introducing the blank. <laughs> um, I should say this, where it says the wedge shape of the blank. Mm -hmm. And then it says introducing the blank, blank. So it's basically what by they say they souped it up. It is a, um, it is a, a newly introduced sub model, trim level. But no longer wedge shape, right? Did I read that? It's correctly? still wedge shape. No, they okay. took the wedge shape of the base blank. Gotcha. And they See, now to me, upper, it made me think it went from wedge upper, to something different. No, this is we got the wedgy this, but now we've souped it up because we've added this trim level, which is the, the this this. I want to. Hmm. Let's just take a shot here. Yeah. Uh, thinking of wedgy stuff with, I think it had a two liter. I think it had low horsepower. The, I think it was eighties, late eighties, mid eighties to late eighties. Subaru XT. Ooh, I really like that car. It's very forgotten about. Um, it is not okay. the Subaru XT. Gotcha. Because um, that was super wedgy. I think that was the wedgy of wedgy. Do you have a specific hint that you're asking for, or do you want me to just throw something at you? Can I get the country of origin? Am I, okay, let's, let's not, if that's too much. Uh, um, I don't think it's too much. Okay, what country of origin are we working stuff. with? This is a, this is a Japanese manufacturer. This okay, is a Japanese vehicle. so maybe it is Toyota. Yeah, the MPFI sounds so familiar. Um, we're at six minutes on time. So wedge, God, I want to say MR2, but I don't think that's it. Should I get it in my system? I don't know. Well, uh, Celica's are wedgy too. A little bit. Yikes, man. Yikes. Um, Submodel. It's gonna be some Celica Super shit that you always. The two liter twelve valve. Oh. No, no, that's not gonna work. Or maybe a Nissan. No, maybe. Huh. How, how about a Nissan two hundred SX? That is a good guess. Yes. Is However, a two liter, but might yes, have is... more power than that. Oh, is that your guess? Yeah. Okay. No. It is not that. Okay. It is a good guess. Okay. Um, hmm. I don't. I, don't, I, I feel tough. like I give you the. I feel like if I give you the trim level, it would give it away. Okay. I would say that the trim level is very much involved with the fact that it has time sequential multi program fuel injection. Mm -hmm. I will also say that I think in this generation, a little bit later. Certainly the generation after this, um, very similar specs, but it also later became available with uh, four-wheel steering. Which this, this ad does not talk about because it wasn't introduced yet. But this is introduced the sub-model that's all about that fuel injection um, and some other niceties. And, but later then they also added in four-wheel steering. Okay. A lot of cars did that. Um, but wedgy, wedge design early on, and definitely wasn't wedgy near the end. And this is something with multiple generations, I'm thinking. I'm yeah. thinking, oh boy. Let's just do it. That's the final guess. Honda Prelude. Final answer. It began with a swift wedge shape of the Honda Prelude. Yes. Then we souped it up, introducing the Prelude SI. SI. Yep. yep. So this would have been the second gen Prelude. Yep. Where Which was definitely I want to say like 80, was it 85 or 86 that they introduced SI? Which uh, is this guy right here. That's that's gonna be you sure it was an 84? 
It's a, it's a second gen. I'm trying to remember gotcha. when they introduced the SI. I think it was 85 or 86. Because they had that dual carb setup that nobody wants to mess with. No one wants to mess with. Um, Dude, what? Are, I think they look cool. I still think they're incredibly underappreciated. Pop up headlights. Well, I think even though you can't see them in the. I end. think an early, like a second gen or third gen Prelude SI, it, you can probably get a very clean one cheaper than the comparable Civic SI. The third, which I think is kind of weird because the Prelude is far more interesting of a car. Was it the third and fourth gen that switched the taillights and headlights? Basically, um, was that fourth and fifth? That was. What was the last generation of Prelude? Fifth. That would be fourth and fifth. So yeah. yeah, fourth and fifth, they effectively changed the headlights and taillights and swapped. Yeah, because you had oh, yeah. getting into it. Uh, um, so they swapped the headlights effectively, and yeah, because you had like the square boxy taillights and like the, the kind of narrow and narrow headlights, yep. and you, um, really any generation Prelude, I think, is very underappreciated. I want one so bad. Dude, right I do. I, I want a fifth first, gen. I want a first gen. They're terrible. I want a I fifth want. gen because they're not terrible. The H twenty two is yeah. gnarly. That was the S two thousand before Honda had the S two thousand. Probably. Fourth gen's probably the best, right? Fifth gen. I think fourth. I think fourth gen's faster. In the Is it? I think it's a little lighter. You got the same oh. motor, the VTEC spec. But you can skip the SH and you still get the same. That's the other thing. Any Prelude you get in the fifth gen, you're getting the 2.2. Yeah, it's correct. Too. So you yeah. can't lose. Yeah, correct. Right? They're all good. Preludes. I, why? The second gen might be, well, the first gen is inarguably the worst, but it's kind of cool. It Talk about it. Second gen, I think every generation is better. Talk about finding one Which that is isn't clapped out as being a challenge. The Prelude is right at the top or, of the Or list. like wildly modified. Uh, horrible, and that's horrible, usually. Speaking of wildly modified and horrible. PCP? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. What, uh, done. what do I got for PCP this week? Yeah, what, what, are, you what, are, you, um, what, are, what are your project cars and drugs? And how are you using or abusing them? So yeah, oh, kind of <laughs> the same stuff. Um, let me pull up my notes real quick. Um, Cause I did, so I'm still working on the Forester. Yes. Uh, Time about water pump jobs, pretty involved, but I do want to pull something. I got a small rant. It's going to be super short. Yes. Uh, get under the car. This car has excellent records, right? So this is a, yeah. I'm the third owner, and that's cool to find Great. a car with high mileage while taken care of. Dude, replacing wearable items in pairs or groups. Oh, that's my rant. You got like all these different like brake components and struts no, and stuff like that? They've been great. They replaced all the shocks. They replaced all the axles at the same time, matching sets. Yes. And that's a smart thing to do because these wear items tend to wear out around the same mileage. Yeah. Unless it's a catastrophic failure. You get in an accident. Circle track course. racing, bro. Yeah, right? Always pulling to the left. Um, get under there. Everything looks amazing. Like. Tie rod ends are great, non perish yeah. The sway bar end links are great. All yeah. been replaced, I can see the records. Except for some reason, they didn't do the passenger ball joint, which is ripped open and grease everywhere. Oh, good. But the driver's side one is like literally six months old. Weird. Okay. So maybe it hadn't ripped open yet, which you should check for play. There isn't a lot of play, but maybe it ripped open recently. I'll give the buyer yeah. some credit there. But why would you not, on a 200,000 mile vehicle, just do both ball joints. You know, you're gonna do both because axes. Because it's a 200,000 mile vehicle. It's a Forester XT though. I understand. With a great record of being uh, careful. I understand, and you understand. However, other people go, hey, you know what, 200,000 miles, I don't know how much longer I've this thing. I'm not gonna spend But the second owner had it for 100 and something thousand miles. Oh, I understand. But they, they, they must have known time. The Count time those pennies. Time. Yep. Oh, this time we oh, go. Oh, hey, I did it. So you yeah, it. so here's the deal, like, especially a little component like that. Yeah. The thing that pisses me off the most is like tires, brakes, uh, these things should all be done at once. Yeah. Just for peace of mind, you know when you're due for maintenance and you're gonna do all those parts at once. Why just do a couple? Because you're always gonna be doing band-aid fixes on your car. Right. If you do, if you do like just the front brakes, your back brakes are gonna be doing a year or so. Yep. Just do them all at once. Same all with your once. tires, don't yep. piecemeal your tires. Nope. That's my small rant, dude. Just, I'm just here for do, it. do all the wearables, right? I'm here. You know here, how to Lie down on the casting couch real quick and yeah. you can tell me more about it. I forgot everything problems. I was just right. upset about. <laughs> <laughs> how about you, man? It's like, a, it's like fly paper. It <laughs> it um, so I, what's interesting is um, I, I remember uh, I was I, just before we started recording this, I was like, oh, there's a random phone number calling me. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. they left a voicemail. I just looked at the voicemail. No way. Um, uh, the turbo on the Galanta oh, finished yes. up. It's in a box. It's ready to go. I have to take a call with my payment information. Um, so yes. Yeah, so hopefully that will be here this week. Oh boy! And then I can start putting it back together, which is great timing because I also purchased two other things for it in preparation for um, the driving while awesome 
rally, which is coming up the first weekend in December. That's right. So just about a month from now. Can I guess what you purchased before you fire off? Yeah, both. That was one of them. Tires? Yes. Uh, this is going to be a hard one. Suspension? I don't think so. Oh. What did you get? A Bluetooth, um, a Bluetooth cassette tape adapter. So you can put put it into in the OEM tape deck and just Bluetooth to it and just. That is so freaking awesome. Yes, dude. I, I've never, so I, awesome. I don't know if they work. I don't know. We'll find out. But I bought one, um, and it's charging as we speak. But I got the phone call that yes, the turbocharger is ready to go. It has been rebuilt. It will be sent back to me. The Bang. background of my laptop is his uh, blonde when I went that. did the photo shoot. Bang! God, it's good looking. It is good, and so um, and then I just got a new set. Um, they are coming from Tire Rack as we speak. Uh, Vredestein Sprint Plus tires, which are like a summer grand touring tire, 300 tread wear. It's grippy. Um, they should be good. I've heard good things. Yeah. I have no exposure to these tires, but I've heard they're excellent for what they are, and more importantly, they'll fit the stock wheels, and they're the stock tire size, Freaking which dope. is on that specific car with how stockety stock it is. Was kind of a requirement. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I could have changed up wheels, tires, and done something more. God, the special, wheels are in great shape on that car. You guys gotta understand, this is one of the probably the cleanest VR4 I've ever. It's good. I've ever seen. It's a good one. So it need it needs the correct tires and the correct thing. So that's what I've got. They should be here soon. The turbo should be here soon. I'm hoping by, you know, by the end of next week it will be fully dialed. I'll get some miles on this turbo. I'll get it back together. Make sure it's not gonna leave us stranded. Top off we'll the oil. I'm sure you lost a little. Top bit. off a little off. bit of everything. Yeah, because you know Shit, I have the radiator out of it. Why not? Yeah, know. exactly. Um, oh, I'm gonna be good to go. Not I'm um, pumped, man. Great car. I'm pumped. You know what I'm also pumped for? What? The fact that we managed to do a full ass year of this year podcast. Yeah, no half assing. Well, um, maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Maybe. <laughs> um, and uh, we didn't kill one another. Um, we didn't uh, manage to get shut down. We also didn't get sponsored. If you're listening, how um, <laughs> yeah. this not be only a time suck? Um, uh, it, 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 <laughs> currently, it's a time suck and a financial suck. Yeah. Hopefully, we can eliminate one of those. Um, but thanks, guys, thanks for like, <laughs> letting us give an excuse to like hang out and talk about cars and, and do the whole thing. So one year under the belt. Yeah. Super. Thank you for like letting us ramble. Uh, week yes. in, week out, uh, and consistently being there for you. We did, like you said, we hit every check mark. We hit every every week. We posted an episode, so fifty two in a row. Yeah, keep the streak alive, my friend. We'll keep the streak alive. Hopefully, we'll get some. We'll, we'll get in a good rhythm of getting some more guests here. Sure, it's always fun, at least for us, even if it's not for you. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, if you're listening, just let us know how we're doing a year in. Let us know if we should aggressively stop doing this. Um, <laughs> if we should change up the format completely. If we're doing good things, I don't know. Let us know. Tell but your family, you. tell your friends. Yeah, hide your kids, so hide your wife. Thank you guys so much. Um, we'll skip all the, the what, where to find us things. You already know. Yep. You've listened a bunch. If you haven't, keep listening. Thanks as always, guys. Bye. Peace.